I've got a question for you. Do you like beans? Well, if you do, you've probably got this place to thank because all of the steel used to produce these tin cans comes from here in Paul Talbot, South Wales. And that steel, like most products, is mostly transported by rail freight. So welcome to the Freight Escape. Looking around, it's easy to see why rail freight fits in here. The trains are like conveyor belts for all sorts of enormous steel products like these. These must weigh 20 tonnes each. This place is a hive of activity with trains constantly moving across the site, bringing in raw materials and taking out finished steel. So let's take a look inside this amazing steelworks. I met with two people who really understand what makes this place tick. It's great to see the scale and the impact of what's going on. Talk me through it. So as you can see, we've got our two blast furnaces here that produce uh, liquid iron. Um, so we produce around about 3.2, 3.3 million tonne of liquid iron a year. So that liquid iron is poured into the torpedo ladles, which are used to transport up to the steel plant, which is around about half a mile away in that direction, uh, via a rail network and uh, locomotive. And I guess that steel's going all across the UK in its use? Yeah, of course. You'll see the steel used across the UK, uh, right in the middle of London, in buildings such as the Shard. Uh, you'll see it in the centre port roof. Uh, at Wimbledon and of course Premier League stadiums around the country. And I believe baked bean cans are important? So um, our, our tin plate site just down the road in Trostra receives a train a day from Port Albert. Those are created for uh, hides and every, every kind of beans, tin, soup uh, and vegetable is made here. I'm not sure a single person watching this has not felt some steel from this yes, production even, today. <laughs> even, if you don't, even if you don't like baked beans, uh, then uh, the point you've probably had in your hand has been minted with uh, steel made in Port Albert. And it's also really good to see the sustainability is really being pushed on site. We've been um, lucky enough to procure some uh, new style uh, locomotives as well um, that are fully hybrid or mainly battery operated. So we really are coming away from the old school diesel locomotive. Uh, where we take the opportunity to reduce our carbon footprint quite, uh, quite significantly. And the amount of carbon that you're taking off the roads, I mean, everything's going out by rail. What impact would it be if you didn't have that rail network? Massive. I mean, I mean, we probably, on a busy week, we'll run 100 trains on the network rail infrastructure, loaded alone. Um, so across the year, by not using road volume to move that out, we're saving somewhere in the region of 30,000 tonnes of carbon. Thank you very much for showing me around. Okay. So how does the rail freight operator keep all of this heavy metal moving? I made my way to the intriguingly named Knuckle Yard to chat with Gareth Lewis from DB Cargo to find out more. So Gareth, thank you for bringing me to the freight yard. This has got a really interesting name, the Knuckle Yard. Yeah, that's right. Why is it called that? Well, Magham Knuckle Yard is an interesting story. It's actually the, um, the joint between two major locations for Tata which is put all around Slam Wern. So since it's the joint, that's why it's uh, called the Knuckle Yard. So um, how do you keep all of this moving? A lot of uh, hard work and planning, to be perfectly honest. Um, we run approximately, um, inclusive of inbound and outbound services, up between 180 and 200 trains a week. That equates to 110,000 ton of outbound steel and approximately 20,000 ton of material we import in uh, purely for the, the vital Tata steel process. And what is it that that steel gets used for? So, uh, just to give you an example, just one, one train load, we're going to make in uh, 1,000 brand new cars and 60,000 uh, white goods. And I guess you have to really load that carefully onto each train. It's vitally important as uh, we are heavily legislated in regards to loading standards. So we employ eight terminal support workers that oversee the, the loading within Tata's infrastructure. So they are there to ensure that the load is evenly balanced right away throughout the, the wagon and that the load is secure prior to going out onto the network. Gareth, thank you very much for showing us around. No problem. I wanted to I learn wanted how to the le rail fits into this picture. So I caught up with Jess Lippitt from our freight team and she knows this place inside out. So Jess, help me understand how the relationships work on site. Yeah, so it's really important that we have a really good, strong, open relationship with not only the freight operators, but the freight end users, in this case, Tata. 
Tata and their demand and their markets will really set the scene and set the tone for where we see the growth and opportunities going on the network. So it's really important that we maintain a close and open and honest relationship with them. Also that we can be flexible and agile and support their demand going forward. How can Network Rail help you to help our end customers? So like many of our freight end users, Tata work on a just-in-time delivery basis. So for example, if the raw materials don't turn up to site on time as expected, we're at risk of the blast furnaces turning off, which is not only really detrimental to our customers' operation, it's also really costly. Likewise, if we don't see the slab and the coil turning up at its end destination as planned, we're at high risk of production lines all across the UK coming to a halt. So it's really key for colleagues of the Network Rail to ensure that they understand the focus and the priority that freight does need on the network. But what we need to remember is that rail is a really green, economical mode of transport in comparison to road. We've already heard today about the amount of trucks that rail freight keep, helps keep off the road. So it's really important that we help working with our customers collaboratively to drive that forward. Jess, thank you very much for giving us that insight. Thank you. It's been a real privilege to be here in Wales today, to not only see the scale and the massive operation that we have here in Paul Talbot and the steelworks, but just the way it's growing, both in importing and exporting great materials that we all use every single day. Not only is rail freight more cost effective, but it's also more sustainable as well. Every single train that we're transporting around is about 76 lorries taken off the motorways, taken off our roads. That's a mile of congestion per train. It's exciting, isn't it, what we can do? So follow me to the next episode where we go to the colossal Drax power station. Join me there. I look forward to it.